Okay, good morning. Uh, I hope you can see my slides and you can hear me well. Uh, so my name is uh, Kuba Mościcki. I work in the CERN storage group. Uh, and um, I will uh, give you today uh, a, a short presentation about Science Mesh, which is a project that we have been involved in, in the last two years, which also involves um, on-cloud uh, platform. So uh, let me get started. So about me, I work at CERN in the CERN storage group in the IT department where we um, uh, operate and develop storage services for physics, but we also, among many other uh, storage systems, we also have enterprise file sync and share platform, which we call Sandbox. And in this context, I've known OnCloud since 2013. So I know, I've known many of, 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 of people working on OnCloud already for more than eight years now. And this is also, uh, since 2013, we've also been deploying on cloud uh, at CERN. Uh, and so this is the Sandbox service. So this is my first hat. And the second hat is I'm also a coordinator of this Horizon 2020 European project, which is called CS3 Mesh for EOSC. And this is where we are building the science mesh. And this is this is this is what I will focus on today. But now, since uh, I I'm from CERN, and usually people are quite interested about uh, to know a little bit about the background of what CERN is doing, I just have three very quick slides. So as you know, at CERN we have this very very large uh, accelerator called Large Hadron Collider, which is in this tunnel that you can see here. It's a very big machine. Uh, it is underground and it has a lifespan of around 60 years. And we use this machine in order to accelerate elementary particles um, uh, and, and, and collide them and, and study matter and, uh, and, 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 and the universe. So essentially what, uh, what happens is that in this accelerator we collide uh, a beam of uh, matter and antimatter in opposite directions. So we accelerate them and then we collide them. And this is, uh, and this is, uh, this more or less corresponds to the energy that is released corresponds a little to, to a collision of, let's say, um, an aircraft carrier that cruises at five knots or a rally car that uh, goes at 2200 uh, kilometers per hour. And then we collect from these collisions, we collect a lot of data and through the detectors. We have several different detectors. These are the four main ones. And these are very, very large uh, beasts, uh, physically very big instruments. Um, and we ha essentially have a collision, collision 11,000 times per second. And each of these collisions creates a lot of data. So then so this is our background, what we, how we collect uh, the data for, for physics. Uh, okay. Then we also have, so then we also have, let's step back uh, uh, to the EFSS. Uh, so before we go to, to EFSS for research, let's step back a little bit and let's think about the traditional enterprise file sync and share. So what do you actually have in mind when you think of EFSS? So what do you have in mind when you contribute to OnCloud, for example? And I think majority of us think of some kind of open source version of, of Dropbox on premises or Google Drive on premises. So we think about sync and share functionality, maybe with some enterprise functionality. And usually, uh, types of work workflows we have in mind is handling of documents or some document workflows, media files, etc. Perhaps some people also think about personal home infrastructure running on a NAS. So these are so these are a little bit the the, 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 the traditional the traditional ways of thinking about EFSS. But what we have been actually doing with EFSS in research is uh, that um, enterprise file sync and share platforms such as on cloud is a service that is a live workspace for researchers. So it's not only for handling documents, but it's also to host research data. 
and it's also integrated with computing resources and other research services that we have on the site. And, um, uh, and also it's part of the daily workflow of researchers. So we see it, through, this EF, through the EFSS system, such as Sandbox, we give access to the entire data set of all this physics data that we collect through the, through the, through the detectors. And then we enable users to analyze this data use, uh, using some, some computing uh, services, uh, collaborate on data, synchronize, share, offline access, and all these more traditional things. And as we see, uh, this research workflow actually covers nearly the entire life cycle of, of, of research data. So from collecting the data, analyze, analyzing the data, then to the publication, to the publications. And uh, actually, uh, CERN is only one of such examples uh, of EFSS uh, applied uh, to, uh, to, to, to research. And we have many, many others. Uh, and uh, which uh, which come together usually uh, uh, in January every year uh, as a as a CS3 community, so cloud services for synchronization and sharing, and um, and we have many of those examples of the research services run by universities, research labs, NRANs, uh, and uh, and public institutions, uh, and. Um, all of them are, to some extent, integrated with some specific applications for research or some specific services for research, editors, data analysis tools, and so on. And um, uh, we've, been, we've been meeting with this community already for since 2014. Uh, every, every January, there's going to be also uh, another meeting coming up next January in case you are interested to follow a little bit more what is happening there. In, in the nutshell, these services, these EFSS services, provide a very useful service, a valuable service to the research community, and also with sizable numbers. So there is more than 16 petabytes of data integrated. Uh, the last time we counted, uh, over 400 users and, and several billions of files and directories all together in these services. But then uh, we are facing the usual questions. These services pre remain pretty isolated, so they are actually isolated data islands, which are not very well uh, interconnected. And those of you who perhaps followed a little bit in the in the past few years, different initiatives, uh, also uh, proposed by OnCloud, uh, for you it may sound familiar. At some point, there was an open cloud mesh initiative, in which was to increase interoperability between different EFSS platforms, uh, and but actually we still have this problem a little bit today. There is not so much interoperation, interoperability between uh, on cloud and other other open source uh, EFSS platforms that are used, particularly in the research community. And also uh, in this community, we've developed many different interesting applications and integrations with the research services, but it's actually quite hard to share them. To share them. So it's quite hard to, to, to make them applicable to other, to, other, to other EFSS service deployed in another institution. Uh, and likewise, I think that as a research community, we also have developed a substantial know-how, knowledge and expertise um, that we would like to contribute back to the commercial and business environments. Um, and uh, currently it's, it's a little bit hard because we do not have really the APIs, uh, interoperable APIs or, or well-established technical APIs and protocols to do that. So in order to, 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 to try to fix some of these issues, we've started this uh, three-year project, which is a Horizon 2020 European Union funded project that started in January 2020. And our goal is to deliver Science Mass, which is actually this global collaboration service for researchers, educators, and so on. 
So we want to connect all of the EFSS services, so many of the on-cloud uh, on cloud services, based services, into one single interoperable platform where users may very easily share data, share files and directories in this trusted environment, uh, but also a platform which would allow to easily share and deploy application and software components that we developed for this research services as a part of the research services integration. Uh, so our product is called Science Mesh, and this is this is this is this, this is the subject of this of this presentation. So this is a little bit the, the layered view on, on 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 the architecture. So we have enterprise file sync and serve platforms such as OnCloud at the bottom. So this is what users are already using, um, and then uh, on top of that we put a federation layer. So uh, a layer that allows different EFSS services to talk to each other in a trusted environment with, uh, ident with well-established identities of the users and well-established trust, trust relationships between these services. And also the interoperability platform, um, which allows to easily extend EFSS functionalities uh, with and integrate with research services, integrate new kinds of editors, integrate new kinds of uh, functionalities. Uh, so a little bit of what, how science mesh works in practice. Um, we do not have a central registry of all the all the users. Uh, on the contrary, we have developed a so-called invitation workflow, which is you can, if you have two, two for example, if you have two on-cloud services running, one on uh, on-cloud-based services running, one on CERN, at CERN and the other one at CERNet, users, uh, and they are part of the science mesh, users may very easily send each other invitations, for example, by email, and then essentially by clicking through this invitation, the, um, the federated, federated shares would be between this, those two users would be automatically established. This invitation workflow uh, respects the privacy of the users. It does not mean that we need to keep track of all the users. Um, and it also follows a little bit how the interactions uh, are happening in the real world where users actually uh, invite themselves through some through some secondary channel like i don't know a whatsapp or instant messaging or or, or an email uh, we have a, a a dashboard of the sites which are connected to the science mesh so this is uh, this this gives this gives the picture uh, of the um, of the initial test bed that we currently have the system is not yet in, in in full production, and we've and we've also developed connectors for uh, for for EFSS platforms. So there's a co co connector developed for OnCloud 10, which allows a site to be registered in the in 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 Science Mesh, but this is very limited in functionality. On the contrary, OSIS will benefit from the full integration because OSIS integrates also Riva, which we use as an interoperability component for, for Science Mesh as well. But for this to be fully beneficial to, to our community, uh, we, would need, we need to have OSIS more widely deployed uh, in Europe. And I think this is a, also a subject of this, the, the, the topic of this, of this workshop. Uh, Okay, thank you. So um, I just want to give you two examples of the functionality extensions that we want to do on top of this federation. So we have a service which has to do with data science environments based on, on Jupyter Notebooks, probably many of you know. And uh, we have two examples of such a service, one which is called Swan at CERN, uh, which essentially provides Jupyter Notebooks interface, but integrates many different uh, computational and storage services. 
so it's an, a, a fully fully fledged analysis platform with all the software previously pre installed with access to our uh, batch farm computing uh, computing platforms such as Spark and Hadoop, uh, and also storage. And it is integrated with uh, um, with uh, with Sandbox in in many different ways. So all the files that you have in this analysis service are the same files that you see in Sandbox, and also the sharing. Whenever you share the notebooks in Swan, uh, it's essentially using the Sandbox mechanism for sharing. So this is all very tightly integrated. And a similar, a similar, um, similar platform based on Jupyter and uh, and and uh, and on cloud is. Um, is uh, deployed at GRC, which is a joint research center of European Commission, which is involved in Earth observation, and they have a full stack of of, of, of services for uh, for geo visualization and data exploration with interactive dashboards, uh, and this is all very neatly integrated with with the EFSS system, such as on cloud. This is just a schematic. What what uh, what um, what type of functionality Science Mesh will enable? So it will enable to share these notebooks across the federation, and give access to both storage and compute resources across the federation. Access to the live works analysis workspaces on one hand, and the visualization dashboards on the other hand, and uh, in a very let's say comfortable for the user two-way integration between the Jupyter environment and the EFSS environment. And here's another example of, uh, of a workflow that we work on in Science Mesh. This has to do with transferring large, larger amounts of data. Uh, so uh, this is an example of, of LOFAR. Which is um, which is an astrophysics instrument that collects uh, collects astrophysics data, and they they collect a lot a lot of this uh, this astrophysics data about the universe, and then this data needs to be available made available for local processing at the participating institutions, and Science Mesh through the EFSS services such as OnCloud will make it easier to transfer this uh, this larger data set. But this will not be done directly by the EFSS, but leveraging on the existing large-scale infrastructure for, for data transfer, such as uh, FTS or Rusho. These are, these are large systems that already do exist, so we are not reinventing the wheel. We are just making it easier for the users to tap into this existing functionality, this existing large-scale transfer systems directly from the uh, EFSS uh, interface. So that was a very, very quick introduction to, to, uh, to what uh, we try to achieve with, with Science Mesh. So just to summarize, I would say that we work on powerful extensions for the EFFS, EFSS platforms. Um, and here for OnCloud, the name of the game is OSIS, uh, to enable new applications and workflows for research use cases, and also pushing the limits of what, e, of what uh, EFSS can do, and also advancing the technology. I think you probably know that there are some components that uh, in OSIS that were developed initially at CERN and uh, adopted uh, adopted by OnCloud, uh, because it was considered that uh, if they work at the scale of uh, petabytes and billions of files, uh, there is probably this is a probably a good ground for 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 having this technology developed. Uh, made available to the wider audience. Uh, and uh, for what concerns Science Mesh, uh, it's an interoperable, distributed, and diverse European EFSS ecosystem for research, and it's open source and community driven. So contributions are welcome. If you are interested by this subject, here are some pointers. The, the Gitter channel, where you can reach out to people working on this project, and also all the repositories are open source. So if you if you are interested by by any, any of that, you may you are very welcome to to come and discuss and perhaps contribute to some of this effort. Thank you.